Me too. Except we can't. You've got to go. It's getting too late. What do you mean, too late? Too late to look like we're just good friends. And Anli and you are in love, and no way in a million years did you have a motive to kill Will. Everything Anli said, we have to deal with. Okay, okay, we'll deal with it. We'll deal with it later. Right now, right now we deal with this. Adam doesn't love me. He... Forgive me. Look, the last thing in the world you need to hear are my problems. No, no. Please. Maybe, uh, maybe I could help. Are you amused? A little. Why? Is it funny that I might like to help? Or is it just that you're skeptical? Cautious is closer to it. I, um... I've learned to be cautious every time a cannibal suggests dinner. Oh, is that an intentional insult? No, 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 it's, it's not an insult, please. It, it wasn't meant to be an insult at all. It's just that I guess uh, some of the more hellish experiences in my life have taken place just after a man has offered to help me. Are you sure the problem was the offer? Oh, let me guess. It was always the wrong man, every time. Maybe you fended the man off every time. You know, I bet that you're incapable of accepting help. I mean, from a man, a woman, uh, even a, an archangel, if one happened to appear. Well, that's a preposterous idea and wrong. It, you see, in order to accept help, you have to be able to trust in someone else's competence. And I doubt if you can do that, even if your life depended on it. That's why you demand complete control. Well, now, whatever gave you that idea? I understand you, Erica. You're just like me. We had a deal, Dylan. I think we'd better talk. Tonight. Fine by me, name it. Same place. Ten minutes. Hey, Dylan. Don't be late. Right. What was that all about? Just work. Oh, Trevor, come on. Don't pretend with me. I can tell when you're in trouble. What's going on? Nada. Meaning none of my business? No. Oh, please. Don't shut me out, Trevor. I would like to be a part of your life. <laughs> No, you can say anything you want. I don't have the right. <clears throat> Matt, I don't want to shut you out. You don't. All I meant was that I worry about you. It's no need. Oh, come on. I heard you on the phone. <sighs> just, you know, with the stomach of your, it's just not my best game. Trevor, are you in trouble? Me? No. It's just the guy that's on the phone is in trouble. Then why did you say you would meet him? Police business. Something is wrong. I can't talk to you about it. You got that? Look, I'm fine. And I'm gonna be fine. Look, man. Look, I I'm kind of in a hurry. I gotta run. <laughs> you be careful, please. I always am. Matt. Yeah. I don't mean to shut you out. I shouldn't have said that. It wasn't fair. Fair schmear. Is that how you feel? No, you, you haven't shut me out of anything. It's, it's my fault, not yours. Do you mind telling me what, what could possibly be funny about this conversation? All those fights, those battle royales we used to have. You, you'd be yammering at me, laying out to me in exact detail how I'd screwed up Again, I, I remember so many times I was praying just once that you'd say what you just said. It's not your fault, it's mine. <laughs> oh, you used to get me so mad. Oh, well, the feeling, as they say, was mutual. And now here you are, you're admitting that it's your fault 
But for the first time in my adult life, I have to admit, I really don't care whose fault it is. Because we could, we could beat our chest forever. We could blame ourselves to death. Mea culpa, mea culpa. It wouldn't change anything now, would it? If I can't <clears throat> make it back into your life, I have no right to complain about anything. I'm sorry. I'm sorry? And it's my fault? In the same conversation, I never thought I'd live to see the day. Don't make jokes. Okay. Here it comes. No joke. Right now, I gotta admit, it would not be a bad thing you're caring for me at any level. If you don't want me blown away in some police action, that's great. If you, if you want to worry about who shut who out of whose life, that's fine. Because from you, Nat, I'd take anything. Like dinner tonight. Hmm? You're paying the bill, right? Deadbeat. Ten percent. The service is terrible. Maybe we could even start working together now that you have admitted your compulsion to control everything and everyone. Oh, well, I think that you just skipped over half that statement. I did say that you were exactly the same way. Ah, uh, well, you were not supposed to point that out. Oh, well, I'm sorry. That won't happen again. <laughs> Erica, I admit my compulsion freely. I just do things better than most people, and I just can't understand why I'm not in charge of everything. Well, I know how you feel. I mean, if people would just do what I told them to do, everything would be so simple. You see, we do have something in common. If people would just do what we want them to do. But they never learn. <laughs> and I know you're supposed to feel guilty. It's supposed to be a failing. I mean, it's supposed to be just this control freak thing. But frankly, I don't think it's such a bad thing. Well, maybe it's not control. Maybe it's uh, a need, a love. For, uh, independence. That's right. That's why this whole thing with Adam is so maddening. He wants to control you. I'm not afraid of him. I mean, I'm not intimidated by his mind. <laughs> There's no reason that you should be. It's just that, uh, he... What? Well, he'll do anything. I mean, he'll even use my little girl against me. And I tell you, sometimes during the course of the last month or so, I really, I felt like screaming. I know what you think of me. Maybe, maybe not. I know that I have certain attributes that some people might think of as, uh, might not think of as saintly. No. But Bianca, Bianca is the best thing in my life. My love for her, she makes me good. And that love I have for her, that is the best thing I've ever done in my life. And Adam knows that. And Adam just takes that love I have for my little girl and, and for him to try to use it against me. Erica, I understand. When Helga wheeled Angelique into that room with all the people watching. All of a sudden, Angelique became I know, some sort of a, a pond in a, a French farce or a, a gothic romance. She wasn't a person, not someone I knew, not someone I cared about. I, I could have, I could have killed Helga that night. I loved Angelique. And to have her mother use her to her own ends. This was like Adam using Bianca. Yes. Well, I may want to control everything, but I don't always get what I want. Well, I mean, I know that you can't always have what you want. Oh, sometimes I do feel just like throwing in the towel and then giving up. Oh, liar. Oh, that's a nice thing to say. Oh, no, it's truthful. You'd never quit. I, I've seen your track record. I've seen you in action. Well, you never quit either. No. No, and I don't even have a choice. I don't know what it is about me, but I keep going on. I keep pushing forward. Well, I know how you feel. 
I mean, I feel that way, too. I just have this thing in me. I mean, sometimes I just feel driven. I, excuse me, I, I don't know what's come over me. Yes, I, I, I haven't offered you more coffee. Would you I, like more coffee? I would, but I really do think it is late. Yes, it is. I, I'm sorry. I guess I just got to talking. No, no, we both got to talking. Well, I'll get your coat. Uh, Erica, I didn't bring a coat. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Well, Look, I would love, uh, uh, just take this moment to thank you for dinner, cognac conversation. My pleasure. Uh, well, should I uh, pick you up in the morning? Oh, well, that would be lovely, yes. Well, uh, good. <laughs> good night. Good night. We've got to be smart. You know, sometimes people can be too smart for their own good. Yeah, except we never seem to have that problem. Like right now. I know you should go, but I just don't want you to. At least we're in sync. I'm so tired. Good. Good. I'll sit here and watch you fall asleep, and then I'll go. Yeah, well, if you wait for me to fall asleep, you might be here until Easter minimum. Well, what, you don't sleep anymore? Mm -mm, I forgot how. Okay, so we start from scratch then. Just lie back, close your eyes, breathe deep. Brian, I try this every night. It never works. Dr. Bodine will put you to sleep. Where's your trig book? I tried that three nights in a row, nothing. What, you built up an immunity to trig? is a problem. Tell me about it. You know, it's like I close my eyes and I start to go to sleep. And then I'm back locked in Will's bedroom and he is banging yeah, okay, on the okay, door. Okay, 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 and okay, okay, yelling, okay. Stop, I... stop. Wrong. My mind won't stop. Well, that's because you've got it going in the wrong direction. You keep your heading backwards when you should be heading forward. Forwards to what? My exams that I'm going to fail? No. Look, just close your eyes, all right? Let me handle this. Close your eyes. Okay. It's fall, all right? Close them. Maybe late September. Picture a big orchard. There's apple trees, blue skies, 71 degrees exactly, okay? There's a bunch of kids, little kids, big kids, cool grown-ups, they do exist. It's a family picnic. Uh, everyone's having a great time laughing, playing. Dogs are jumping up and down all over the place. And there's this very hip old couple sitting right smack in the middle of everything. Mm, that sounds nice. What is that, a movie? No. No, close them. It's an anniversary party. 50th anniversary for Gramps and Grandma Bodine. Who? Us. Us.